Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is Marie Holiday, and today is September the 22nd, 2020. And I uh, hope everybody had a very good day today. Um, and get a little water here before I get started. Uh, I'm going to do a topic on something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, the topic is going to be women who join the military and the benefits it will change you uh but before we get started i just want to remind my viewers and my subscribers i want to first of all thank you for supporting my channel um and with that being said if you have not subscribed and especially if you've been viewing my videos subscribe you know we got to support each other get the word out so with that being said, let's get down to business. First of all, in terms of my topic, women who join the military and the benefits, it will change you. I want to let the audience know that I am a veteran. I served uh, in the United States Marine Corps. I went in as a young woman at age of 20, 21 years old in 87. I uh, did my time, got an honorable discharge. Um, my MOS was Aviation Supply. I actually had the opportunity to serve during Desert Storm, Desert Shield era. So, and I'm here to tell you that whole experience will, will has positively impacted my entire life. So, I'm speaking from experience uh, in terms of with this topic, women who join the military and the benefits and how it would change you. Uh, I survived Paris Island, as the audience may not be aware, any woman who joins the United States Marine Corps, uh, they send women to Paris Island, they also send men to Paris Island for basic training, and they will also, men also have the option to go to San Diego of Par uh, uh, basic training in San Diego, California. So I served during Desert Storm, Desert Shield era, and um, so I'm going to give you some insight from my experience as being a Marine. They say once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. Um, also, I also encourage everyone to view uh, YouTube videos on making of a Marine, but I'm going to give you my personal experience as serving in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, basic training, before I get into the benefits, I'm going to give you a little bit historical background of what, what, what basic training is and for women, it's the same for men. When I went in as a young woman, I would never forget this as long as I live. Uh, that first experience of basic training was culture shock. I was literally scared to death. Uh, in, in 87 time, when I, during that era when I went in, uh, I'm sure it's still the same now. It's not a whole lot of differences, but, uh, but in some areas there are. Um, basic training was 13 weeks. Uh, I remember as a young woman that 13 weeks of, uh, in basic training, I got set behind because I developed sleep palsy, and I would explain later on what that is in terms of sleep palsy uh, uh, that I developed. So because of that, I wasn't able to graduate with my platoon. I had to get set behind to the next platoon. So to make the long story short, I ended up being in basic training, Marine Corps basic training at Paris Island for 26 weeks. Uh, in, the, in the making of a Marine, we are trained, we're taught basic survival skills, marksmanship, uh, we they were trained on how to use the M16 rifle in that era. It was with the iron sights. None of it was not that new stuff that they got now. We literally were trained how to use that weapon on that firing range with the iron sights. Part of basic training during the era that I went in, we learned land navigation, how to maneuver under enemy fire. Uh, uh, we also underwent various academic and physical exams throughout basic training. You know, like I said, I would never, never forget that experience as long as I live. Uh, I can remember as a young woman in basic training, and I would never forget this. Um, a drill instructor, I saw this drill instructor uh, sending people to run across this this field and, and they would tell us 
pull that flag down and bring it to me. And trust how a few people do it, they ain't think nothing of it. So they told me to run across that field and pull that flag down and bring it to me. Uh, you, you do what them DIs tell you to do. And so here I went, 100 pounds lighter, and I pulled down the flag, folded up, brought it to him, and he said, I didn't tell you to fold it up because the five or six prior people that did it, they didn't think to fold it up. They just returned it, ran it across, got it, gave it to the DI with the fly flying everywhere. And he said, you have internal leadership. You're going to be my guide for 90 something other recruits who didn't know any more than what I knew. So I will never forget that. Um, you know, it kind of ties into is, is, is leadership born or is it made? Me personally, you know, I'm not going to give credit all to the Marine Corps. I'm going to give credit to my upbringing and my mother and my father who, who I believe a lot of leadership skills it can tie into your environment, how you were raised, what you observed. The Marine Corps just enhanced it. Those leadership skills were already instilled in me before I went in. The Marine Corps just enhanced it. So I kind of shared that uh, um, story about when I had to run across there and get the flying, and I just immediately knew to fold it up. You know, to me that was common sense. But the prior five or six people, they just, yeah, I followed the order. I followed the order, but I took it beyond what it was asked of me to do. And that's how I got appointed to be the guide to 90 other lost people in basic training. Uh, I tell any woman in the military, always keep God first. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very spiritual. You know, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would have never survived uh, that experience in Paris Island as a young woman. Um, uh, something else about, you know, you know, I respect any woman in any branch. I don't care if it's the Marine Corps. I respect any soldier, but I'm specifically gearing this video towards women in the military and, and the benefits and how it has an impact on us. I don't care if you're Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, Coast Guard, you know, uh, we, we all go through this phenomenal training uh, to, to wear that uniform. And I want to salute my women in the military uh another thing about you know that 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 uh that that teamwork and that wearing that uniform as a marine i can remember this was several years ago i've been out um for years now but i can remember you know i was living in atlanta got lost with direction and it's there's one thing they say about a marine you know we're going to look after each other and we don't we don't we don't leave no marine behind and I was lost, couldn't figure out where I was, and, and we Marines, we can spot each other a mile away. And I sort of glanced to my left, and I saw these two young Marines, you know, just kind of, they were, they were standing like in a parking lot talking to each other. And because I was so lost, I just immediately gravitate towards them. And it don't take but a minute to know you're speaking to another Marine. It don't matter if you're out of uniform, we know the language. And those two young Marines didn't, did not just uh, give me directions. They literally say, follow us. We're going to get you to where you need to get safely. And, and that's just another example how Marines, we don't leave anyone behind. Um, so, like I said, you know, that whole experience of... of, of being in the military during Desert Storm era, you know, of all of the leadership skills that I was was uh, enhanced by being in there, uh, that's will be, be within me for the rest of my life. So that's going to lead me to now talking about the benefits, the benefits of women who serve in the military, rather it was in the past or currently in any branch you know you know the army the air force the navy the marine corps the coast guard uh, my daughter's in the navy and the benefits this is just me talking 
the benefits of women being uh, the benefits of women serving in the military rather was passed currently it enhances that woman leadership qualities you know like I said we all have leadership qualities but but the benefits for women from my experience it enhances those leadership qualities it also enhances that woman sense of pride it enhances uh, the self-esteem it enhances the woman's self-worth uh, the uh, more benefits it enhances your drive and focus you know from my experience in anything the other things that you may want to accomplish in life I don't care if it's if it's re returning to school or getting a promotion or working out or studying for a test or or uh, or eating healthy it just get enhances your drive and focus as a woman to be be a mother to be a wife to be a sister or or niece it enhances that drive and focus uh, another benefit for women who who experience the life of the military you know you will not quit you will not quit at anything that you set your mind to do if you set your mind to start something, you're gonna finish it. It don't matter if it don't. It don't matter how much time it takes. You know, for the benefits of women who experience the military and getting all of those skills and training, you will not and be able to make it. Either be able, even even be able to make it through boot camp, even be able to make it through your MOS training school or what, or make it that next promotion. You will not quit at anything that you set your mind to. Another benefit of women who have experienced uh, the military because you're enhancing all of these leadership skills, self-esteem, uh, all of that, it uh, enhances the woman to become a role model for young girls. And that's very important. It, it, you become, rather you realize it or not, you become a role model for young girls who become a young woman. You know, without me even realizing it, because of my military experience, I was a role model to my daughter when she was a young girl and uh, until she became a young woman. And I have no doubt that my experience of being in the military had a direct impact on my daughter who made the deliberate decision to join the military after she graduated college with her bachelor's degree. She's currently right now uh, while she's in the military in the Navy working on her master's degree. So it, all of these benefits for women, you know, who, it enhances our leadership skills, our pride, it enhances our ability to be a role model in all of the above. Um, and I'm speaking from personal experience. You know, I, I've been out of the military for over 30 some years and, and it don't matter. Military people, no military people, Marine, especially a Marine, that, that some of those traits are still within me. It's just automatic. I want to share, I want to share some, to give the audience some insight about when I went through Paris Island as a young woman that you that you you won't find on YouTube. You only would notice unless you only would notice by actually experiencing that journey. In 1987, when I'm going through basic training to become a woman marine, and still today it amazes me. I've had a discussion with a colleague of mine, and I was sharing some of this information that the, many people might not know unless you have gone through Paris Island as a woman Marine in through basic training. What the audience may not be aware is that no young woman, no young woman, and mind you now, you're talking about 90 to two, two or 300 young women from the age of 18 to 21 years old entering basic training at Paris Island become a marine but what i realize is 
is because when we first get there, that we have to get these supplies. And, and you know, I remember a lot of us asking the drill instructors, you know, where do we go to purchase tampons? Because we're going to have, you know, when these young women going to have a menstrual cycle. But no young women will experience a menstrual cycle for the entire 13 weeks we're on that island. And it's still the day I can't figure out why. Those DIs, when they told us that, we could not believe it. And I'm saying, what do you mean? You got a hundred something women in the, from the age range of 18 to 21 years old. You, what do you mean with, with none of us going to have a cycle? And I'm here to tell you, and I was there for 26 weeks because I got set back. Uh, for whatever reason, the women in basic training at Paris Island, all of our mental cycles will stop when we enter basic training. Now, when we leave, it'll return. And, and, and the way they explain it to us, it has a lot to do, first of all, with the culture shock, something about being on that water, on that island, and, and literally culture shock because you're so afraid of these DIs. And because of that, everybody knows the cycle stop at the same time. So there was no need to purchase tampons. Uh, another phenomenon that occurs at Paris Island when you're going through basic training is some recruits will develop sling palsy. Anybody who's Marine know what I'm talking about. Some recruits will develop sling palsy, some don't. And I was one of the ones that developed sling palsy. And what sling palsy is, you know, back in the day when we had to train with the M16 with the iron sights, there was a, there was a, a sling that we had to wrap real tight around our arm and it cuts your damn blood circulation off. And, and, and for some people, because of their biology, sling palsy is temporarily, uh, uh, your, your arm becomes temporarily paralyzed to the point you can't use it. And because I wasn't able to use it, I couldn't qualify on the rifle range. So I had to get set back to a different platoon until the arm healed up. So that's what we call sling palsy. I developed that at uh, Paris Island basic training. Uh, another phenomenon that will occur, not necessarily a phenomenon, but another occurrence that will occur in basic training, uh, because I'm telling to tell you, you know, them DIs ain't nothing to play with. Uh, if a person is already predisposed to mental health, that predispos predisposition will break. The psychosis will occur in basic training because if they're already predisposed to mental health and with, the, with, with going through basic training, the culture shock, Paris Island, it will occur through before they can get out of basic training and they have to ship them out of there. I saw a lot of that going on when, when I went through basic training. The ultimate goal the ultimate goal of basic training to become a Marine, they're literally, their ultimate goal is to tear you down mentally and physically and rebuild you as a Marine. Rather, it's a woman Marine or a man Marine. That's the ultimate goal. Basic training is a big percent of psychological but it takes about four to six weeks to realize the game because it's no joke when you first get there. I'm not going to minimize it. Another um, uh, part about basic training that I remember that I want to get an audience insight on is because I went through basic training in the summer months and I remember any Marine who went to basic training in Paris Island, we all know about them huge sand fleas that will eat you alive. I mean, them huge sand fleas, they start biting you and getting in your ears and you trying to stand in formation, you trying to drill, you trying to march. You, I'm here to tell you when them sand fleas come swarming down on your behind, I remember we were not allowed to flick them off. And sometimes they'll be all up in your ears biting and them things bite. And we have to stand in formation for two months, I mean for two hours, and we could not touch them sand fleas off us because the DIs did not give us permission to do that. So I will never forget that. 
and, and, and that's just a little bit of insight that I wanted uh, to share with the audience that you won't read about. Uh, the DIs, the drill, tr the, drill, the drill instructors, they're not allowed to put your hands on your body, but by the end of the arrow that I went through, they did. And you just sucked it up. You know, I mean, the stuff that y'all see on YouTube and television with, with the watered down version of, of, of basic training back in the day, yeah, they weren't supposed to put their hands on you, but they put your hand, their hands on you through basic training and you just kept your mouth shut. Um, I remember when I went through basic training here, we had three minutes to do everything. Three minutes for a hundred people to eat, get in that child hall, child hall and eat. Three minutes for a hundred people to take a shower in, in a group bit shower room or, or, or whatever. Three minutes for everything. Everything was three minutes. There is no, the zero individuality. It's all about that group. It's all about the power of the platoon. You know, if, if, if one person fail, we all fail. You know, like they say, simplify. We all know what that means. Simple fidelis, always faithful. Once a marine, always a marine. So again, I hope the audience got some something out of this in terms of gaining insight and knowledge in terms of the benefits of women, uh, or a woman being in the military in terms of how it can enhance those leadership skills, self-esteem, uh, become a role model, gain a little bit of insight on my experience as a Marine surviving Paris Island. I served during Desert Storm era, got out with a honorable discharge, and I'm here to tell you this inside of me would be with me for the rest of my life. So I hope you all got something out of this, and God bless all, all my uh, military uh, Military or uh, participants, rather, is Marine Corps, Navy, Army, Coast Guard. Um, continue to do the great dog job that you do. Simplify. Have a great evening.